If you're anxious about not having enough supplies on hand, then I'm going to show you in this video how you can structure a database in Airtable. Now, this is particularly relevant right now because we are undergoing the COVID-19 pandemic, but this is also very applicable to any business that might have some sort of inventory management software. So without further ado, let's jump into it and take a look at how we can organize this problem in Airtable. Hey, I'm Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. And if that's of interest to you and you want to learn more about how we do that, definitely swing by our website, check out the different resources we put together, and do check out our free crash course that will get you up to speed in Airtable quickly and easily. Without further ado, though, let's just jump into my screen here and talk about today's video. And it is really how to manage your inventory. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, this is something that is like personally very you know um, applicable right now because of the COVID-19 scare. But at the same time, this is still a system that you can build for your business as well. So kind of, you know, check this out, thinking about it from both perspectives. Now, you'll see just jumping into my screen that we've got four major tables here. We have the suppliers, and this is where we're collecting our different inventory pieces. We have the inventory itself, and I'll go into much more detail about everything in here. And then we have two different tables, one for stocking inventory and one for using inventory. So let's go into how we would use this and how we're going to be able to get the insights that we need from it. And it really all comes down to that inventory table. So first and foremost, suppliers is really the easiest table. This is where we track the different um, you know, suppliers that we go to in order to get these different things. So in the case, in these examples, you'll see that we link the supplier directly to that inventory, right? If you have the same inventory, but it uh, it's available through multiple multiple suppliers, in order to you know overcome that, you can just create that same inventory, but uh, create that record multiple times, linking to the supplier each time. And the reason you want to do this is each supplier is going to follow its own different rules, right? For example, Amazon's lead time tends to be, if you're a Prime user, you know, two to three days. And so that's what I've marked in here. Now, Costco, on the other hand, if you're putting in like an Instacart order or something like that, uh, this weekend, you know, I tried to do an Instacart and I didn't get, I didn't have availability until like three or four days out. So your lead time is going to change depending on the supplier and where you're getting that, um, you know, those inventory pieces from. But of course, we're able to look that up back at the inventory level, as I mentioned. Now, before we go into more detail about all the different calculations that we perform at an inventory level, let's talk about the stocking and usage tables. So stocking, as you see, we've got a name derived here, and this is when we bring in new items. So if we were to, let's say, record, um, let's say we were able to, to pick up some more TP, so we would mark it here, new toilet paper. We would mark the date that we brought this in, in this case, the 15th of March, and then the number of packages that we restocked. Let's say we were lucky enough to get two packages of TP. Impossible, I know, but uh, let's imagine that. Well, we know how many quantities are available per package, right? And this is because based on this inventory item, let me flip back to toilet paper here. We know that when we buy toilet paper from Costco, it comes in 20 in a pack, for example. And these are made up numbers, so don't take them to the bank. So uh, if we're taking that, and this is our stocking, mm -hmm. you know, what we're really able to say here is then, well, since 20 come in a package and we know we took two packages, then our quantity restocked is 40. Great. So similarly then, back at the inventory level, we are able to roll up that number and see the total quantity of TP that's been purchased. And so I just added 40 new you know, rolls to this and we had 20 before, so it automatically updates and knows that we've got 60 rolls all in. Now, of course, we're also able to track the amount that we use and then deduct you know, in terms of amount available. So let's talk about the usage table. Similarly here, the usage table is where we mark every time we pull something from it. Now, when we use TP, we're not using the entire package, we're using a roll at a time. So in this case, there is no additional calculation for you know the amount that come in the package and all that. So let's suppose then that we were to uh, use maybe two rolls today, maybe we had to restock a couple bathrooms today. As we put that in, then we know now that we've used you know one, two, three, four, five rolls over uh, over the span of you know the last week or so. 
So now all of this is able to be pulled back into our inventory level and this is where we do all the calculations. So let's take a look. Over here we've got, these are, this is a link to our usage and our stocking. Now of course we can kind of just hide that for now in order to uh, get more of this on the screen at once. So we can of course see the uh, quantity that we've purchased and as I mentioned this is using a roll-up field that looks at the quantity restocked, so this, uh, this stocking table and we're just adding up all of the amounts that we've restocked over time. That would tell us how much has come in or inflow of inventory. And then quantity used, of course, is our outflow, the amount uh, that we use over time. And as in the case of toilet paper, we you know, had an example with five. Then, of course, it's pretty simple to do the math and know how many we would have available. And now more importantly, we're going to start calculating you know, the amount that we use on a daily basis. So first we have to say, well, when was the first time that we actually used TP, toilet paper, in our example? Well, if we flip back to the usage table here, we see that we had a recording of uh, toilet paper roll being used on the 9th, and we used one. So going back to inventory, that's what we're using here. We're, get, we're able to get that value again using a roll-up field. And in this case, we use the min values aggregation formula, which is gonna look at all the different dates that are connected to this particular inventory type or item uh, on the usage table. And then it brings back the minimum date. And so we know that that was three nine. And of course we can count the number of days since, uh, since this occurred. In this case, what we're using here for date span is we're saying if a minimum date exists, then we want to use this formula here. And this is the date time difference formula. It's going to calculate the number of days between today and the minimum date used. So as of this recording, today is 315. And you see that the uh, minimum date was 39. So of course, the output here is six days. And this is very useful because then we can take the date span, we know over the last six days, right, we have used five toilet paper rolls. And so with a little bit of math, we can calculate the daily usage here. Daily usage is just saying, hey, the quantity used divided by the date span, if certain conditions are met. And the only reason that I, by the way, say if certain conditions are met, is because if I don't do that, then it tries to divide by zero, and then we get some error signs down here. So I only want it to do that calculation if, uh, if certain conditions are present. And so in this case, we're able to do it. We say, hey, you know, we have uh, the quantity used is five over the span of six days. We know we're using 0.83 rolls per day. And so then we can do some math and say, well, we know how many we have left, right? That would be the quantity available. We have 55 toilet paper rolls available. And we know uh, that we use 0.83 per day, so we can calculate then how many more days we have stock for. In this case, 66 days, right? Now, we also know the lead time based on the supplier, right? In this case, I was mentioning Costco. If we were to do an Instacart order at this point in time, it might take four days to get that. And so we can do a little bit of math to figure out, you know, do we need to reorder or not? We've got over two months worth in this example. It takes only four days, and so we're not in any hurry to order more TP for this example. But let's go ahead and, uh, and ch uh, change this around a little bit. So on the stocking, you know, we just added this record of, of new toilet paper. Let's remove that so that we only have a total, let me flip back to inventory, we only have a total then of 20 of these purchased, and we have record of five of them being used. In that case, we only have 18 days left of TP. So I'm going to go ahead and book some more toilet paper usage here. Let's say, uh, let's say we had to use it again uh, tomorrow. And at that point, we pulled three rolls. Well, this is going to change everything, right? All of our calculations are going to kind of get thrown into whack here. Because the uh, date span then will be six days, but we'll see that we're using 1.33 rolls per day. And that means we only have nine days left. Now, since it takes us four days to get something, we don't want to wait until we're at the very end before we put in that order. So that's where we built the reorder status. And this little formula is just saying, hey, if the days left minus the lead time, remember days left nine, lead time four. So if that value nine minus four is less than 10, then we want to flag this item and say reorder. And so that's, that's exactly what this formula is doing here. And we're also adding a little color splash to this. Using the color up here, we're saying, hey, if that reorder status is equal to reorder, then we need to get alerted.
And so the nice thing about this is you can imagine if you've got a list of 100 different items that you want to keep in stock, either for your business or for your self quarantine, then you can just see, uh, you know, all of these different uh, values really at a glance. And so when it comes time to reorder something, you get an alert beforehand, so long as you're using the system and properly checking out items and checking in items as they come in and out of your storage. So I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you'd like access to this template, I will include a link below and let me know what questions you might have. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site. So swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.